That's Life is a pretty simple game, but it provides for some lots of fun times. Now, you have a different amount of, of pawns depending on how many people are playing. I think two to four players you get three, and five to six players you get two. Now, all that you do on your turn is roll. I got a two! Just say I'm blue. I move two spaces. I'm on the negative two point space. Next, we get a six for yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ugh, negative six points. A four for green. Negative four points. And red gets a four, two. Then it's back to blue. Now blue rolls a three. If blue moves this guy, of course you want to get to the end, but if blue moves this guy, he's the last person to move off this space so he keeps the negative two points till the end. Perhaps he won't want to do that. He'll want to wait and see if other people get on there and then leave. Like over here, if it was green next and they roll a six, well, he's out of there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now it's up to red to hope someone else comes along. Or perhaps red will roll something that gets them off there far enough that negative four isn't too terrible at the end of the game. There's lots of choices, and what you often see is something like this happening. As people psych each other out, who's going to be last to leave? There's a lot of psych out in this game. Now if blue did leave, this goes, and from now on, roll for red, four, one, two, three, four, like that. You can just move it all up if you want. In fact, this whole arrangement you can change every time you play, but this is how it's suggested in the game. You start with these negatives, one to eight, then you have these lucky leaf things that I'll talk about, then you have positive, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, then negatives again on the way home. If you get one of these lucky charms, then you get to turn one of your negatives at the end of the game into a positive, very big. So if you did get the negative five, but you got one of them, that's plus five now. Notice these wooden cylinders, they're the guards. As soon as any player is on a space with a guard, these can be moved on your turn. So if it was green's turn, two, they could move one of these two, they could move this two, or they could move the guard two. That's important because if you leave this space and there's a guard still on it, that's considered, it's like a ghost player. You can't take this card, this count, this thing yet. So you might move that. Of course, another player then might move guards onto your space. So you might get a situation like this. I've seen it. You know, I just moved backwards, but you know what I mean. And it's like, oh, oh. and by the end of the game, someone does have to move because all their guys are home. So someone does have to move and take a bad thing or a good thing. It depends. Um, anything else to say about this game other than it's lots of fun? It's simple. All you have to do is roll this thing. It's called a dice. Um... No, the game ends when the players are home, even if there are cards left, and then you add up your scores. Top score wins. Good luck getting positive. Can I say I love a game? Well, yeah, I can. It's my show, my video thing. Um, I love this game because everyone growing up or even when they're an old man has played games where you just roll the dice and move. Monopoly, Snakes and Ladders, Ludo... Inspector Gadget game. Um, you know, you just roll and move, roll and move, roll and move. But this one, so anyone could play this, but this totally changes everything with just a simple rule in that if you're the last person to leave a space, you get those points. So there's all these blocking moves and different choices to make. Am I going to take that or will I move now and get that or will I take this and will I go for that or do I hang and wait because I might not get it. And if you could follow that sentence, you're ready to play. That's life.